Hi there everyone, welcome to Quick Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're diving into the world of sound effects and where you can find them for free. I'm going to show you five different websites where you can download, license and cost free sound effects. Ready to add some audio magic to your projects? Let's get started. So the first website where you can find free sound effects is called Zapsplat, and that actually not only has sound effects, um, but it also has royalty free music. What we can do is, for example, search for Woosh, and then uh, it shows you all the different Wooshes they have. So you can preview them here and you can download them here. In the free version, you can only download the MP3s and you need the gold version to download the high quality uncompressed WAV files. We can use Zapsplat under the standard license. What does it mean? We have the right to uh, credit them. So it requires attribution in the form of a credit or a link back to the website. And you can, for example, uh, credit them in your YouTube video description. And they even give you three sentences like sound effects obtained from Zapsplat. And if you put that in your YouTube video description, it's totally fine and you don't have any problems. So why would you pay for it? Apparently you have uh, three sounds per 50 minute download delay, which is then removed. So you can yeah, actually work and you can also obviously download the original WAV files, which have higher quality. And you'd also don't have to attribute or credit them in your project. So Zapsplat comes in with five pounds a month or 40 pounds a year. But I think especially if you just have one specific project you want to do right now, go with the monthly version first. One thing you can do, of course, you have some extra sounds with the gold pack and you also have the some free SFX packs, but then some of the sound effect packs are actually only for gold members. So you get that too. The next website is called Mixkit. They don't have as many sound effects, but there are a few. And uh, you can search here. For example, I already searched for swooshes. You can listen to them, download them here, and you can use them under their Mixkit license. What does that mean? So they say that you can use them kind of for like everything, definitely YouTube videos, but even like filmmaking, video games, TV and radio broadcasts. So really for everything. With the Mixkit sound effects free license, you can use them in commercial or non-commercial projects. And you are able to download, copy, modify, distribute, and publicly perform the sound effect items on any web or social media platform or a podcast or wherever. Um, the only thing you can't do is really just redistribute the item on its own. So don't take the sounds and sell them by itself. You're also not allowed to claim them as your own or register them on any rights management service. The next one is kind of like an OG one. And I don't even know if I should put that into the list, but I used that like 10 years ago when I started to come into media and when I did my first project. As you also see, it kind of looks a little bit outdated and you have to create an account first, which is not super comfortable, but it's for free. Um, you can search here for all of the different sounds and then you can preview listen here and click on that file to download and then there are three important different licenses the attribution attribution non-commercial and creative commons zero the sampling plus is apparently outdated according to the website so for the creative commons zero license you can actually do pretty much whatever you want with the sound you can even sell the sound but you can't claim that you're the author. For the second one, for attribution, you should always mention the original creator of the sound when you use them. And non-commercial attribution is the same as attribution. You have to attribute to them, you have to mention them, but you can't use it in any commercial work. If you're back to the website, you can search for Vush here, and then you can put a filter, for example, on Creative Commons Zero, because you know you can do whatever you want with those, and then you can only listen to those, or you can also remove that filter by clicking here and uh, search for the, only the attribution ones. I would go with the attribution or the Creative Commons Zero sounds, because the non-commercial sounds, obviously, if you earn some money with YouTube at some point, even if you don't do now, it's not the best idea to use those 
Theoretically, from law perspective, you aren't allowed to use those. The next sound effects website is Pixabay, and they apparently have 83,481 royalty-free sound effects. So a bunch, and you can preview, listen to them here, and you can download them over here. They claim that they're a vibrant community of authors, artists, and creators sharing royalty-free images, video, audio, and other media. You can use the content for free. You can use the content without having to attribute to the author, although giving credit is always appreciated, obviously. And you can also modify or adapt content into new works. For example, if you use it for music, for your whatever, change the sounds, make new sounds effects with it, something like that. And um, what you cannot do is you cannot sell or distribute the content either in digital or physical form on a standalone basis. So. Like in the other one, you cannot just open a shop and sell their sound effects without having changed them or anything like that. Here they say that standalone means where no creative effort has been applied to the content and it remains in substantially the same form as it exists on our website. The other don'ts are pretty straightforward, like you cannot use the content in any immoral or illegal way, but that it's not super important. And if you don't have a lot of experience how to search for a sound effect, like and subscribe because I'm working on a video where I show a few specific types of sound effects and how to name them. So it's easier for you to find them in the sound libraries or on websites like this. The last one I want to show is Soundly. And Soundly, I did use that a few years. Um, it's a really cool tool and a little bit different than the other ones because you actually have to download it. So this is how the downloaded program looks like. They have also a bunch of free sounds. Um, obviously, you need internet to access those. They're not that automatically downloaded to your hard drive or anything. There's a few really cool things we can do. Uh, first of all, we can change the speed, which also pitches um, the audio effect a little bit down or a little bit up, depending on how fast or slow you, you play it. And if we go here over to settings, the settings button, we can enable an audio storage location, which means like I put that, for example, now to a how to name SFX, it's a YouTube video I'm planning to do. And in the footage and the audio and the SFX folder, I have my folder structure here. I set this. And for example, now if I make a selection here, it's 15 seconds now. And if I would have Premiere or DaVinci open, I could just drag and drop that directly into the timeline, which doesn't work now. But if I would do that, it would automatically copy to that folder and it's linked to that copy of the audio here, which is pretty cool because then all of your audio files are in one place. You don't have to worry about them, that they are not linked anymore in your project or something like that further in the future. What else can you do? So for example, here on the right side, you can click, okay, here we can click on car. And then on the left side, we see all the different libraries they have. And we can look, for example, oh, we want metal sounds. Um, so they have a lot of metal sounds. Again, open that. Oh, metal break, metal crash and debris, metal friction. It's pretty easy to find some really nice sounds. A really cool thing you could do, and I would recommend, is download Soundly and not only use their free sound effects, but you can also link other local sound effects you have on your hard drive to Soundly. So we click on File, Import Audio, and then it says drop files or folders here to add them to your local library. Then you have your local files in the same list as you have the free Soundly files. You can change them also in the pitch and the speed, which is really nice for sound design. And you can drag and drop them directly into your projects because we set up the folder. Just don't forget to change the folder from project to project. With a free version, you can have up to 10,000 local files. So 10,000 audio files you can link into the Soundly library but you also have unlimited downloads. You can use the free library, but if you want to have more, you have to pay $15 a month or you can change it to yearly, then it's a little bit more cheap. You get all the pro sounds, you get unlimited local files. So if your sound effects library is getting bigger than 10,000 local files, you could use that. And there are some free shop add-ons and cloud storage and stuff like that. If you only need it for one project or something like that, and you need all the pro features, they actually also have a 24 hour feature, which depending on if, if the project is paid, for example, $10 isn't too much. Um, if it helps you to finish the project and bring it to a better level, why not? Could be a lifesaver maybe for some of you. So yeah.